Hello, this is uh, a demo of the software discontinuity set extractor. Uh, to open this software, we first of all need to download it from the GitHub uh, repository. You will find this in the in the link in this video. Once you have downloaded all the files of the GitHub, uh, what you have to do is to execute this file, DSA and the latest version. So in this case, we just select it and drag and drop in the common window. So it will open the the GUI, the GUI of the of the software. Here we have the menu with uh, different options and the toolbar and all the different buttons and boxes that we will use to to manage all to, to perform all the processes. Um, the first thing that we have to do is to, to have a file of with a point cloud. So I'm going to load the the cloud with cloud compare. I I like a lot this software. And here I have this this file. Okay, this is a point cloud which I downloaded from the Rockbench. As you can see, this is a, a, an ASCII text file with uh, separated by spaces, I think. Maybe spaces or tabs, I don't mind. And the separators, the decimal separator is a point. So here we have three columns. The first one is the X, Y, and Z. And from the fourth to, the, to all the rest, columns, uh, we don't care about these columns because the software will only load the first three columns, which are the coordinates. Um, in order to visualize it, we can drag and drop this file. Okay. Cloud Compare will show us automatically the meaning of the different columns, X, Y, Z, and this is the intensity of the LiDAR. We accept it and then we can visualize what we are going to analyze. Okay? In this case, I'm going to select the gray, the gray, to increase the size point. And this is a section, a sector of a tunnel. And we can see different discontinuity sets as we are moving this and rotating this point cloud. So I'm going to load this point cloud with a discontinuity set extractor. I can load it in two different ways. The first one is loading the 3D point cloud and the other one is file load data point txt. So I always use the toolbar icon. And I go to the desktop. Uh, where is the desktop? Escritorio. DSA demo and I load it. So now the point cloud is loaded. I can see here in the action log that the point cloud has been loaded. It's close to 320,000 points. And the first thing that we can do, that we have to do, is to calculate the normal vectors. So we have two options. When we, if we calculate the normal vector performing a coplanity test, we must use the first option, the first button. And if we are pretty sure that all the points are coplanar and we don't need to perform the coplanity test, we can press the second button. This is the number of neighbors that the software will use to calculate the normal vector for each point. So if we select it to 30, which is a default value, it works pretty fine. It will uh, search the 30 nearest neighbors and it will calculate the normal vector of that set of points. And the tolerance is a parameter in order to determine if the those points, that set of points, is coplanar or not. So the first thing that we do is to set up the planes. In this case, I am going to um, perform the coplanity test. And now we just need to wait because this might take a long time, depending on our computer. Okay, I, pa I pause the video. And this just finished. It took uh, 255 seconds. And now the point 
all the point cloud has been analyzed by the software and this button has been enabled, the stereo pulse. If we press it, it will uh, show us all the poles of the normal vectors for each point. So we can see that here we have an enormous, such as a uh, very um, dense uh, point cloud, stereo, stereo net of, of poles, and we cannot see anything because we have one pole per point. So what we have to do now is to uh, make a statistical analysis. This uh, statistical analysis is done through the kernel density estimation uh, algorithm, which determines a, a non-parametric density function. The, the number of bins, uh, we can leave it to 64, you can vary it and see what will happen. And when we perform the statistical analysis, it enables another button, which is the pulse density. And we can see now how different can we observe the poles. These are all the poles, but this is just the density function of the of those poles. So here we can see where the poles are concentrated. So we can see that here we have the a very dense pole here. This is the J1, J2, J3, J4, and I think that the only important one is this, this other J7. So this is a very important step now. As the, although we have calculated the density of the poles, we can observe it in 3D. What we want is to detect and locate the peaks, the maximum value of the density function. And in that coordinate, it will be located the information of the principal pole, which is the orientation of the discontinuity set. So we can uh, manage and edit and control this uh, this step with two parameters. The first one is to we have to uh, say to determine the minimum angle between the principal poles, the minimum angle between the two normal those those two vectors, and thirty it's a it's a good value, so we can set it to thirty, and we can also introduce the maximum number of principal planes of princip uh, principal poles that we want the software to find. So I just modify this and now results are different as you can see. So the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one and the fifth one. Okay, I think that I am going to introduce all these poles and number eight. So I can edit the poles. So I leave the first one. I accept the second one. I accept the third. The third one. Observe that here we ha you have no pole proposal. Okay. The fourth one, the fifth, and the sixth. I don't want the sixth, so I select the sixth and I remove it. Now the six is here. I don't. I don't want this value. Six now is here. Okay, I accept it, and I remove the seven. Okay, now I accept this distribution of poles. Close it, and now I am going. Now that I have all the principal poles here, you can observe them. You have here the deep direction, the deep of those discontinuity sets. Now for each principal pole. I am going to assign uh, that principal pole, that discontinuity set, to the surrounding poles. Okay. So the minimum angle between the principal pole and a pole to be assigned to that one uh, is set to 30. You can modify it, but 30 is a is a good value. So now you can see that this button has been enabled. Okay, and you can compare this to 
Let's open also this one. Now we have all the poles here. You cannot see anything. This is the density function that we finally accepted. Okay, you can also visualize it in 3D. You can make it bigger if you want. Okay. And this is the poles that have been that, uh, assigned to a principal pole. Okay, so for the first one, you have all these poles here. For the second one, you have all this. For the third one, all this region. It's okay. And the maximum angle between a pole here, the principal pole here, and another pole to be assigned is 30. If we close, if we reduce this value, all these circles will be also reduced. Okay, so now we can close this. And now um, we are going to inspect that preliminary result. So if you press this button, it will generate us this uh, this file. Okay, let's update. Okay, it is finished. I'm going to open, and here we have the coordinates, the original coordinates of the points, and we can see that we have four more columns. The first one is the the, th the first three columns mean uh, a color which is red, green, blue and the last one is the corresponding joint set. These three columns allows us to allow us to uh, visualize uh, the point cloud with a different color per discontinuity set and also the third one allows us to load it in Cloud Compare and also inspect it in a different way. Now, this file uh, is ready to be open in Cloud Compare to inspect the preliminary results. So, the only thing that I have to do is to drag and drop it here. X, Y, Z, red, green, blue, and the scalar, this is okay. Okay, I can maximize and move it here, remove this. Toggle. And now this is the pre preliminary result of this classified point cloud. Okay, I'm going to activate the color bar just to visualize. So the blue is the first discontinuity set. The dark green is the second one. You can see here. Okay. Light green is the third one, yellow is the fourth, and the red is the fifth. Okay, so just see that rotating this point cloud, you can see that okay, all the points which have the same color are members of a planar surface, and all of them are almost parallel. So these are the discontinuity sets. So if we accept this, now again we can do uh, another another step, which is very interesting. Now, see this point cloud, and let's extract the first discontinuity set, which are the uh, the blue one. So I can see that all the points with the scalar field number one are members of the first discontinuity set. And now I select this, and I can extract the points with the scalar one export you see and now I just have the points of the first discontinuity set but now we can do another more step which is to make the, a class analysis this class analysis will uh, analyze the full point cloud will separate it in different discontinuity sets and for each discontinuity set we'll find all the points member of the same cluster and it will enable another analysis which is the spacing and the persistence and also the roughness and waveness. Now let's continue with the discontinuity set extractor. Uh, 
and now I'm going to make the class analysis and here we have two options the first one is to fix the discontinuity set or extension and this is another parameter when we have all the clusters, all the points member of the same plane it will find many different clusters but for each cluster, for each set of points member of a planar surface we can calculate its best fit plane and we will get a normal vector which uh, will be surely different to all the rest of different clusters so we will have many different uh, normal vectors but we can do another thing we can adjust a plane with a deep duration and a, and a deep equal to the discontinuity set that we are analyzing and then we just calculate the location of that plane so we can fix a plane all the planes parallel to each cluster to each different cluster so all the planes will be parallel but uh, differently located in the space so if we fix the discontinuity set orientation the normal vector will be the one that uh, is assigned in the in this joint set in this discontinuity set the k sigmas is a is a test uh, to allow to merge and to adjust the position of different planes this is explained in a in a paper published which analyzes the discontinuity the normal spacing it will be uh, it is in the wiki so now we have all the clusters you can see that you have many 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 different clusters okay and one thing that we can do is in the cluster editor to remove all the clusters whose size is minor than certain value a certain number of points so i usually apply a filter i remove all the all the clusters which have a less than three 100 points so apply we remove all the points with minor than 100 points and here we have the table showing us the different clusters the discontinuity set the number of the cluster and the number of points you can see that the minimum number of points per cluster now is 100 and here we have a b a b c which are the components of the normal vector of a of the cluster as you can see for a for a discontinuity set we have exactly the same normal vector because we selected this option but the d parameter is different because it has been adjusted to the to be located in the space here here you can see that for the second discontinuity set the normal vector is different obviously and this normal vector uh, has been calculated from these two values the deep direction and the deep so the next step is just to save all the data to the txt and as we press this it it is uh, recording and saving um, some different files in the same folder so the first file that uh, it generates is this one it has the, all the same number of the file and this the last part of the file is means what it tells us uh, what it is actually so in th this file is the classified point cloud in which all the small clusters have been removed and we can load it okay this is the previous classified point cloud without removing the small clusters as you can see many small clusters were were removed and this is a clean and classified point cloud okay but now this is very interesting because in this we have six more files 
which are, which are the joint set number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 and all the different classes for each one so we can load them in Cloud Compare we select them all we put in the same directory Okay, toggle, and now let's inspect the first joint set. Okay. This is the discontinuity set number one with all the different clusters. One cluster, one color per cluster. This is the second one. In order to visualize it properly, I'm going to overlap, or, uh, make a superposition with this, with the original point cloud, and I'm going to increase the size of the point. Okay, here you can observe that all the planes, all the points are part of a plane and all of them have more or less the same direction okay because this is a statistical method okay. and we can do this for the, all the different discontinuity sets okay now let's see this file this is the most important file xyz J, C, and A, B, C, and D. Here, what we have is the X, Y, Z, the joint set of this point, the cluster of this joint set, okay, the number of cluster which it belongs, and the A, B, and C, which are the normal vector, and the D, the coordinates of the plane, okay, because this is for a, for this equation. The plane is defined by AX plus BY plus CZ plus D equal to zero. So A, B, C, and D are the core are the parameters of that plane. So with these four values, now we know to which plane it depends, it, uh, it belongs. Now let's load this file. X, Y, Z. This is the scalar value because this is the joint set. This another one is the cluster, so it is a scalar. And this is the normal. Now let's ignore this value because we don't now, for this purpose, it doesn't matter. Ignore, ignore, ignore. And this is also a scalar. So, the coordinates, number of the first scalar is the joint set, the second one is the cluster, and the third one is the D parameter, which tells us the location, the position in the space. So, okay, let's apply it. And now, let's observe this. Now, we are just uh, observing the, the color tells us the first scalar, which was the joint set. So let's extract the all the points members of the first joint set. We select it, we press here from 1 to 1.5, export. Okay. Now we are viewing all the points members of the first joint set. But now let's change the scalar field. If we see the scalar field number two, okay. We have exactly done this other point cloud, okay? But now we can see, we can select the parameter D. This is very interesting now, scalar field number three, okay? And now let's show the scale bar. So this is a really interesting analysis now. I'm going to saturate this a lot. 
Okay, now as you can see here, you, we have one, two, three, and four clusters. Those four clusters belong to a plane. Let's load the cloud and increase this point size, okay, to four. Those one, two, three, four clusters belong to different planes which are separated in the space. We know that they have exactly the same normal vector and actually I'm going to just estimate that normal vector with this tool. No, I don't have this tool now. Okay. But I am going to see if they belong to the same plane or not. So the, this value, the scalar field, minus 9.03, this is the D parameter. In this case, this set of points have exactly the same plane equation, so they belong to the same plane. This one also belongs to the same plane, and this other one also belongs to the same plane, although they are classified as different clusters, but they have exactly the same plane. This is a very important issue to uh, aspect of this method to perform different uh, analysis. So, you can see that they have different colors. This is the cluster number 80, cluster number 20, 28, and cluster number 150. And five and cluster number 39 but they have exactly the same coordinate why is this very interesting because if we want to know the normal spacing of this plane with the with these four the only thing that we have to do is to calculate the difference between the d parameter of those point clouds so I'm going to select the scalar field number 3 and this value mine 9 close to 9 and close to 9.3 so the normal distance between this point and this point should be close to 0.3 so let's calculate that distance that normal distance let's estimate that normal distance so I select uh, the distance tool this point and this other point it then it's close to 0.3 so now we can also calculate the normal spacing of a point cloud so uh, now we have all this information of with uh, the original point cloud which was this one this is a section of a tunnel which I downloaded from the Rockbench repository and just one thing that I usually do is to save the binary file of this state in order to save all the all these files Rockbench number three okay and the last step once we uh, we have calculated everything with the discontinuity structure is to save this state because we can uh, recover all this state of calculation and for instance modify the number of principal poles or close the cone or modify the number of clusters or the, 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 the number of points per clusters and, and everything. So just to save this state and not uh, you select this icon, you click on this icon, save the state and we insert the name But uh, it is very interesting to use exactly the same name than the file. So I'm going to 
put exactly the name found. Okay. And this is uh, saving this file .mat, which will be will allow us to load again all the state. Okay. Now let's see how to load this state. We can close the ESA and we are going to we're going to open it again. Okay. File load database or simply click here. Okay, open a state. I go to the desktop and I load this file. And now we recover everything. Just to, fin just to finish this tutorial, we have uh, two files which are very important. The log, it shows us all the process with all the different parameters that we used and how much time we, we spent to, to do each step. Okay. And the other file is the report. With this report, we can see with this report we can see all the output okay the use parameters the number of initial points the number of final points the number of discontinuity sets their orientations and for each discontinuity set and for each cluster, the number of points and their plane equation. Okay, this is the very interesting report. And this is it. I hope that uh, you enjoy it and we keep in touch. Bye.